Good day, YouTube. Ruthless, toothless warbles here with uh, the outcome video of my uh, jewelry rigged pump repair of this wonderful frost expansion crack. When I told him about it, my son, the RFS Fire Brigade Brute, uh, Group Officer, smiled a wry smile and said that I wouldn't be the first who'd done this and said I was bloody lucky I didn't do it on a fire truck and discover it when I turned up to the fire, all of which is true. He also said he was surprised I'd gone with silicon and fiberglass because in his estimation, better thing to do would be to grind a groove over the top of the crack on both sides and have it welded up by somebody who's got a TIG welder. Well. Shit, Warbles didn't think of that one. However, today's Monday morning. I discovered this on uh, Friday. Put the first patch on on Friday. Put the second layer of the patch on. Smoothing it out with olive oil and rubber gloves. On Saturday, then let the whole thing sit all day yesterday. To cure. And today's Monday. And if I had um, had the brainwave on Friday when I wasn't going to town because I was you know, too freshly post-extraction, it would be like today before I got to town to take it to the welder and I might have to wait a week for him to get around to doing it. And the issue is the way I discovered this problem was when I tried to pump water up from the boy walls into the inside-out waterbed, which functions as a water tank and which had managed to go dry as you can see and I need that tank to have water in it in order to have running water at the kitchen sink which at the moment I don't because that tank is empty therefore I'm falling back on a uh, a water can to operate me sink and my theory is that the way I managed to empty the tank is by not actually noticing that this was leaking and you can almost still see the moisture trace where there was in fact a puddle and uh, it was leaking from this joint here I don't quite know why but that unit was probably damaged by the same minus 6.5 degrees Celsius overnight minimum which busted the bell housing on my water pump. So the methodical nature of my madness now is probably becoming apparent in that my plan is to reassemble the pump and then hook the pump up to the recently foreshortened suction hose which unveiled and revealed to me a previously unknown fact which is that uh, when this suction hose spent years crossing the air boom and the air boom was full of actual air under pressure then the heat of the sun on the dark blue ultraviolet would transfer itself to the suction pipe and the suction pipe could um, transfer that heat into the air in the boom the bottom of which was in contact with the water and therefore you had cold at the bottom and hot at the top and you'd get a convection cycle setting itself up inside the torus and apparently that cooled the pipe sufficiently that it didn't ever get soft and get flattened like happened subsequent to my filling the air booms with construction foam because the plastic had gone rotten and yeah reasons but anyway this is the second suction hose that it's happened to the first was this expensive nitrile suction hose and i was able to hermetically seal both ends of it after filling it with boiling water 
and heat it up and use the pressure of the expanded hot air on the inside and I fixed that one but now not only do I know better but I've discovered the only way to fix the El Cheapo version is to cut the bloody thing out of the circuit and then don't ever do it again that's what I have found okay it is now time to suck it and see because uh, if I can use the jury rig repair put some of that water up into there then I get to have my kitchen sink back into operation today rather than wait for some time next week when I might not be here anyway could be off in Coffs Harbour getting something organised to be stationed inside a linear accelerator which should be happening in two and a half weeks time Right, just a sip of coffee. Before I get into uh, greasing the housing and putting it back together. I think I'll use some, I don't know, 30 year old, no name brand Vaseline. To gently Moisten the mating surface. Now I've got to say the only flaw in this piece of Chinesium is right there. There's just a little bit of a bump in the casting which they've left there. But it didn't seem to affect the unit. It didn't leak. The neoprene on the O-ring apparently had it sealed. And hopefully that'll sit there and it'll work, at least for today. And I know I should take it in and get it welded, but I might not have time to get that done before I have to go away. Time will tell. Isn't that right, Felicity? Eh? Time will tell. It beginneth. You want to be fed, girl. There you go. You can have a feed. Yes, you can. Yes, and you can eat the bread too. I had a bit of bread last night, but I had to soak it in soup. Potato soup. There you are. You can even have another bit. Got to share it around, haven't we? Hey, eh? thirty years trying to teach animals to share bread. Some of them get the point. Can you see the bow bird on top of the pump? Clearly, that's where my priority should be uh, pointed to. Okay. Back together again, elevated on a dry platform. Oh, yeah. Part one, will it hold water? Static. As I pour the water in. Okay. Sounding good so far. Oh, 
and everything is dry. It's a pity the vibrations can be counted on to eventually ruin this repair. Still not leaking. Yeah, it's a pity the vibration will probably extend the crack in the fullness of the time, otherwise I would be quite happy with the hydrodynamic solution or the flexible patch that sticks really tight to the inside of the metal and a flexible fiberglass reinforcement inside the silicon but I'd really bloody hate to think about fighting the fire and having the pump fall in half because some asshole was too much of a tight fist to get it welded when he should have got it welded. So therefore I probably will get it welded even if this works today. Okay, let's suck it and see. Take that off. And open that. So the water's got somewhere to go. Pull on, choke on. Ignition on. That's holding pretty good. Bugger. It is leaking. Yeah, it's leaking right down there at the bottom. So I will have to get it welded. And uh, that's a bit sad. But I think it might put a few hundred litres from the boy wall up into the, uh, the inside out waterbed. So we will give that a go. I love this system. I'm really pleased with it. Right, is the hose chocked? set at half open give the water somewhere to go and hopefully not stress that little patch any more than it has to be okay once again we suck it in the sea There we go, that keeps the pressure down. Let's see how we go.
I'll tell you, that's going fine, and you don't have to watch me stand up here for half an hour. So, well, we'll come down and hit the pause button to spare you that miserable fate. Okay. Job done. Now time to go down there and see why the bloody thing's popping and backing and farting and carrying on like something's wrong with it. Probably a bit of water in the carburetor float bowl. There you go. It just bloody well died. But it stayed going long enough to get the job done, so for that I am duly grateful. But the leak does not seem to have got too much worse because there's not a huge amount of water there. There you go. With a bit more throttle. Yeah. Not bad. Not bad for a crack pump. However, it only just got that one job done because by the time I was finished there was water pissing out of there as well. So yeah, it's got to come off again and go to town and ideally be welded, otherwise replaced. Okay, so that's switched on. We follow the line, not seeing or hearing any leaks. Well, that's weeping a little bit, but not much. And we are perhaps not. Okay, why is there no water pressure? We have some water here, but not much. Something else is going on. Found another leak anyway. Okay, right. That's that fixed. The hillbilly hermit has running water again, as well as a gravity fed garden hose, which you know, sort of kind of works. Right, so the pump's open again. The bell housing is on the veranda, drying out, ready for me to pull that stuff off. The new found hole in the hose is fixed. And unless this perhaps six litre per day drip has been caused by spilled water coming out the floor underneath the moisture barrier, is what I think it is. Then there's a freshly frost induced leak somewhere up there. The silicon join between this and this perhaps. But I can live with a drip like that if there's only one of them. And that's how much water in half an hour. I can cope with that. I can cope with that. So there we go. The plumbing problems have been more or less, sort of, jury rig repaired to the point where they will keep going a bit longer. To be honest, it's getting to the point where that tank, which has been there for 20 years, and that garden hose, which has been there for 20 years, they really should be replaced. Probably with this little 300 litre tank, if I can figure out how to fix it, because it really has suffered seriously significant damage. 
But anyway, they're issues for another day. Right at the moment, I'm going to have my lunchtime cup of coffee. And one parting thing for you to look at and have a giggle at. The yurt fire flu has acquired a Chinaman's hat because without something to hold the hot air in there, that metal cools down to the point where the creosote condenses and blocks the holes. So, not only do you have to put a jacket around it, you also got to put a hat on the thing, as well as tie it down. So to be honest, the way I'm having to fix things and repair things and patch things up and make sure everything works, I haven't got time to be sick, let alone die. Warbles on a lot to YouTube. Ciao.